folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. And I just saw it this Saturday and had a very good time called Jurassic World. Yep, this is of course the popcorn ball that we all received at uh, AMC Theaters in Burbank, California. Yeah, you can see the picture of Chris Pratt as Owen Grady, you know, with all the raptors, you know, he was on the motorcycle along with them just to track down the the dinosaur known as Indominus Rex. Yep, Indominus Rex, that's what it's called. It's sort of similar to the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, it even says, share a coat with a brass raptor. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. This is, of course, the fourth installment in the Jurassic Park series. The original Jurassic Park, which is done by Steven Spielberg, that's based on a Michael Crichton novel. It also includes its sequels, The Lost World Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park 3. But, of course, it's been over 22 years since the first movie had came out, and we finally got one. But it's been, you know, over 10 years since the third movie. And I would say this one right there is even better than the sequels. So anyway, it stars Chris Platt from last year's Guardians of the Galaxy, who played Star-Lord in that movie. Bryce Dallas Howard from the film Spider-Man Free as well as The Village and Terminator Salvation. Nick Robinson, Ty Simpkins, Vincent D'Onofrio from the film Full Metal Jacket, and one of the Law & Order spin-offs. Ifran Khan, Omar Sy, B.D. Wong from all the Jurassic Park films and many others finally make his return. Jake Johnson, Lauren Lapkiss, Katie McGrath, Judy Greer, Annie Buckley, James DeMont. It's written by Rick Jaffa, Amanda Silver, Derek Connolly, with co writer and director by Colin Trevaux, who just did the film, an independent film from 2012 called Safety Not Guaranteed. The movie begins set 22 years ago after the events of Jurassic Park had occurred. A new company known as InGen had restored a fully functioned and very futuristic dinosaur park known as Jurassic World that's located on Isla Nublar, which is located on Central America near Costa Rica. Brothers Zack and Gray Mitchell I decided to join the entire weekend by visiting their aunt, who is the, uh, the park operation manager named Claire Deering, who is played by Bryce Dallas Howard. So Claire's assistants acts as their guide as he was too busy recruiting more of the investors with bigger dinosaurs, maintaining the park's attendance. So all their engines genesis had created a new generally modified dinosaur known as Adominus, which which was made from the DNA of the several dinosaurs, as well as all the other modern animals that they actually had found to restore back to life. So anyway, the chief genesis named Dr. Henry Ruse, played by B.D. Wong had actually kept all the mixtures a secret with uh, Simon Maserandi, who was the park owner, who actually orders uh, Viceraptor trainer Owen Grady, who's played by Chris Pratt. He actually decided to inspect the Adominus enclosure before the exhibit had opened to the public, which leads to a bigger problem. So Claire and Owen had inspected together, though they clashed over the controlling nature and their failed past relationship. But suddenly, Vic Hoskins, who's the head of InGen Security, who's played by Vincent D'Onofrio, 
was interested in training the parts for Velociraptors for military use, but Owen had argued that that using the Raptors Alpha is not equal to tame all of them because that's when something goes completely wrong when they find out that the Adominus has suddenly escaped by scaling through all the walls and, and attacking everybody at sight. So that's what leads to an evacuation. But unfortunately, it gets even worse because by the time they tried to, to do that, Suddenly, uh, Gray and Zack have wants up exploring the entire park by going inside the gyro spear, which is a glass ball. And unfortunately, but when they started to ignore all of this, it, of its evacuation to leave, they actually went all the way straight into the jungle, where all of a sudden, the Adominus had finally found them and actually attacked inside the ball, you know, smashing them. Well, suddenly their cell phone had actually went inside and, and started ringing, trying to see if if maybe they're going to contact them. So they actually escaped from the Adominus and actually jumped into, into the waterfall, finding, as we speak, a jeep that's actually hidden in, in the abandoned area where Jurassic Park had stand. So they, they try to escape, but then they just keep on coming. So then Claire and Owen decided to go after them just to see if if they have survived. And they're still, you know, trying their way to find them, you know, before it's too late. So then of course they find a better solution to actually go after the Adominus once he continues to their his rampage by killing several Optosaurus and, and smashing the park's Pleosaurus aggregate which suddenly all the Pterosaurus actually started flying around through the entire park and started to attack everybody the entire Taurus is out there just running for their life they, they even attack their ant that's, uh, that's actually flying all the way until they landed until she ends up landing into the into the water where suddenly the giant uh, Mosasaurus which we actually shown earlier in the film when they're watching the show as he actually jumps up and eats the the shark he actually eats uh, her that's inside the Pitosaurus so then they all try to escape and the rest of the team decided to go by using all four of his, his raptors to, to go after the Indominus and then suddenly the Indominus decided to communicate with the raptors you know after you know he was riding with them wearing all these uh, these tags as uh, as uh, Owen started to ride on his uh, motorcycle to go to go after them. The raptors started to communicate with with the dinosaurs and all of a sudden they started attacking them one by one and then after that they were already already getting attacked until suddenly all the other dinosaurs started to go around and attacking um, Zack and Grady already hidden inside the the truck you know with Claire behind and they're driving all the way and then of course Owen finally came to the rescue in his cycle to go inside but it gets even worse once they tried to escape as the Adominus decided going decided to go after him already straight to the park into the center um, at night and then until we finally get to see the final battle as the Tyrannosaurus Rex had finally appeared to actually attack the Adominus with the help of one of the raptors yeah, to attack him and then leads to the final shot where the Montosaurus had finally jumps up on the water and attacks the dominatrix <laughs> so <laughs> he's finally dead so then the next day 
they they finally arrive into Costa Rica where all the other tourists has been already injured and everything and and they're trying to find a ride all the way back home by going inside the, the helicopter where we finally get to see the last part of the T-Rex once he's on top of the uh, the, the building by giving one last war and then the movie ends yeah and wow th this is without a doubt the best movie I've seen all summer yeah next already next to Mad Max uh, Fury Road and the Avengers Age of Ultron but definitely this one is the best one of all and I gotta say it was a whole lot better than the other two sequels that follow before it especially the third movie which I did not care for um, I like the second movie which is The Lost World Jurassic Park but but I do admit the movie had its problems but it's definitely had a good connection between this film and the first original Jurassic Park the one that Steven Spielberg had directed that's based on the Michael Crichton novel yeah and that's what made it so special it definitely had a nostalgic feel to it, you know, towards it, because we actually got to see what it really looked like. And in fact, it was really cool because I got to listen to the original theme from Jurassic Park that was done by John Williams. Even though the music in this film was done by Michael Giacchino, you know, the same guy who actually did do the music for the video games, but he also did the music for several movies. In, in recent years, such as uh, you know, Star Trek uh, from 2009, and and all the other films I've seen in recent years, so it's really cool. And I think he also did the theme for um, for the Avengers movies too. But either way, I mean, it's really cool to listen to um, the original score again, the way it was meant to be, while they throw in the mix with all the other scores that went in. Um, it was very exciting. And I, I like the fact that they showed the dinosaurs once again. In fact, the CGI doesn't even look as bad as I thought it would be, you know, in comparison with the third movie and, and the second. Because the CGI in the, the 1993 film was, was definitely high-tech at the time. They, it was definitely well-made. It looked more real. It's scary and chilling and, and the way they did it. It was perfect. Um, I, I love the cast that they chose for this movie, you know, especially Chris Pratt, who is very good as playing the Biosaraptor trainer. Definitely worked too because <laughs> he's definitely the hero of of the film that that works. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard is definitely good in the movie too. In fact, she's even better than some of the previous roles she's been in and other films, which I didn't care for, but. I'm glad to see she finally get to play a role that really suits her character as uh, Claire, who's the manager of the, the park. Yeah, I know some people even confuse her for uh, the other actress named Jessica Chastain, but definitely I already knew who Blythe Dallas Howard is. I mean, she is indeed the daughter of Ron Howard, and she is a redhead, so I already knew her before I even knew Jessica Chastain. And, and some of the other films she's been in. So yeah, she was good in the film. I, it could have been worse. Uh, Nick Robinson and Ty Simpkins, you know, they did okay. You know, they're not as good as um, some of the kids that I've seen in other Jurassic Park sequels. But I think they they suit better compared to all the others. I mean, granted, because I did love Joseph Mazzello and and I ran a Richards in the first movie yeah. I mean but here they they weren't I mean they're basically nephews you know mostly because you know they're already dealing with um, their family having a divorce and all that so I could see why I mean the, the older brother was basically you know feeling like he's you know because he's already like you know doing his usual stuff like like most of these kids have done in movies you know, they always, you know, listen to music or texting or any of this other stuff with their phones. And, of course, he's, <laughs> he's always, you know, looking at another girl. 
while the kid is just enjoying the, the ride, you know, he wanted to see more of the dinosaurs. Yeah, and she's already feeling bad because of what's going on with, with her family. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he did play uh, a villain in this movie, and which he's the head of security. And, yeah, he was a complete asshole in, in the film. Yeah, he, I mean, he wanted to use the Raptors for, for the security, and, and he wanted to use his operation to take over after one of them had got killed Yeah, you know, during that explosion when they went straight into the dome. I'm, I'm glad he actually got what he deserved at the end. But everybody else was okay. I, I mean, it was a good film. I, I really enjoyed it. It worked so well for an installment and sequel. It follows everything from the first movie. It worked pretty well. I mean, so it was a whole different experience that the film was going for. And uh, I'll give you this though. There are a few flaws in the film, but I think I knew that's what they were going to go for, so that was okay. Uh, the only thing I didn't like, and I'm going to mention this anyway, was when they went inside the gyro spear. Yeah, Zack and and Gray had went inside. We actually saw, and you wouldn't believe this, we actually saw a guide video that features, oh God, Jimmy fucking Fallon. Unbelievable. I I had you know after all these movies I've seen, why do I have to see that? I, I, I'm like watching, it's like watching a fail skit that he likes to do on his stupid uh, talk show of his. And it's never funny. It, it never was and never will be. I wish they would cut that scene out of this film. It doesn't make any sense at all. It's just another cash grab for Universal since they own NBC and of course Comcast to, to throw that douchebag, you know, just just for attention. Unbelievable. I mean, it, it's so stupid. That That's almost as bad as throwing Barney the Dinosaur clip on Jurassic Park 3. And that was bad enough because there was already a song that was a parody of uh, a real, of McGuffer Park from We All Yankee Bit by using Jurassic Park and actually show a clip of, of Barney actually getting smashed. Yeah, I know the actor who was in the that that forgettable Barney movie, uh, Barney's Great Adventure, had uh, uh, they had the actor Trevor Morgan to be in the third film, so I guess <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> okay, well I know I'm I'm being slightly off topic, but that's how I felt. I don't like it when they throw Jimmy Fallon in almost every single movie. Um, that includes. Uh, Whip It and that one movie I like too called uh, Almost Famous. Yeah, he, he's a no town hack. He's never funny and he never will be. So, <laughs> more to that. But other than that though, I, I love the film. I think it's definitely worth watching for those who enjoy Jurassic Park. Um, even if you don't care for the sequels, that's fine. Um, Jurassic Park will still remain as one of the best movies and best adaptation from a Michael Crichton book, even though it was a lot different from the movie, if, from the book compared to the movie. Still, it was the once again best adaptation that we ever had, and it worked pretty well. And you know, you get scared mostly from all the dinosaurs that we had. It was an interesting idea to actually see every single one of them, you know, come to life, coming from the DNA that they they just used from genetics, and it's just it was just exciting. I mean, you really want to see more of that. That's what made it so successful, and still, it's it's the best. So yeah, definitely check out Jurassic World. You'll definitely won't be disappointed, and and I sure wasn't. So anyway, I give Jurassic World four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.